Welcome back to my video series on solving the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube with the three-block method. In the last episode, we learned what the 4D cube actually is, the pieces on it, and how it generally works. By now, you should have a vague understanding of what you're looking at by using dimensional analogies. In this video, we're going over some helpful notation to describe moves on this puzzle and the RKT technique. RKT is super important, so make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. By now you should also be familiar with the one move scrambles, so if we look at this, this is a one move scramble and you can click on these other pieces here, but you don't have to. Every click can be done by just doing these 90 degree twists here. So remember the names of the cells from the last video? So we have U for up, D for down, F is front, B is back, R is right, L is left, I is inside, and O is outside, which we can see if we rotate like that. Well, the notation we use is, of course, based on the letters, more specifically the pieces of the letters. For example, this is the U sticker of the U, R, two colored piece. So we call clicking on this move U, R, and that's the clockwise one because on the mouse here we are doing a right click, so this is U, R, and left clicking here is U, R prime. By the way, while the notation is based on the mouse clicks, the same exact letters apply when you're doing it with the keyboard. The same thing works for clicking on a three colored edge piece here. So if I click on the inside sticker of the I, U, R three colored piece, that's I, U, R. But these ridge and corner moves aren't really used for speed solving at all, so we pretty much don't use them. Like I said earlier, every weird corner or edge click can be done with a series of 90 degree twists like that. This next example is a little trickier, so what do you call right clicking on this piece? Well, it's weird because is this a one colored piece? Only one thing is highlighted. Well, actually it's a two colored piece because the other color is on the side that we can't see. So this is RO and this would be RO prime and RO2. Now for wide moves and slice moves, we kind of just use the layer mask, which you can just say how many layers to turn before it in curly brackets before the move. So here is the RF sticker. And if I left click on this and hold down the slice layer mask, then this will be two RF prime. But again, we don't really use um, slices very much for speed solving, so all you really need to know is just the two colored clicks, which are super simple, just two letters combined and prime, not prime, or twice. For four dimensional rotations, there is a fancy notation you can use that uses two letters. For example, this rotation would be called XZ, and this one would be called ZX. But really, you can just say like normal rotations here, so you can just call this Y and Y prime, and then for four dimensional rotations that change the inside axis, you can just say rotate red to inside or, you know, rotate green to inside is pretty much what we say, even though we do have better notation. So just for some easy practice right now, try and figure out how to notate this um, three dimensional looking soon algorithm on the 4D Rubik's Cube. The answer is pretty easy since we're clicking on RO and UO here, so it's just the same algorithm except with RO and UO instead of R and U. So hopefully that gives you a better grasp of the notation that we use when we talk about algorithms on the 4D Rubik's Cube. Now let's go over one of the most important techniques you will need for solving the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube, RKT. RKT is a way to treat a single cell, a single layer, of a 4D Rubik's Cube like a 3D Rubik's Cube. The name RKT actually comes from a generator set. So you know when you hear like 2Gen and it's all RU moves? Well, that is a generator set using R and U moves. And RKT is the same, just with different moves. RKT is the generator set of doing any RO move like this and any I cell rotations. So in the old notation, this was called the T cell and this was called the K cell. So RK would be this move, even though now we call it RO, and this is the T cell, so this would be doing T moves. But essentially in the new notation, it's RO and I moves, except the name stuck from the old notation, so we're left with RKT. So if you just do random clicks here, and then random RO clicks here, eventually you can get something that looks like this. So what's happened here? Well, we have scrambled just the inner 
three by three by three looking layer here. But how does this actually work? Let's try to do a sexy move. So our goal is to do a sexy move here, R U R prime U prime. But if we just do it like this, it affects too many pieces. What if we don't want to affect this many pieces? So the logic behind RKT is that when you do an RO move here, it rotates the R layer of this cell here. So we have a way to do R moves on the purple side. But how would we do a U move? Well, from this position, what if we just rotated the U layer to the R layer like this? Now the U layer is on R here, and guess what? We have RO moves to do R turns. So if we now do an RO, that acts as doing a U move on the cell because that was the U layer. And now if you ignore the outside, you can see that on this internal 3x3, it looks like you did the moves RU. Now if we finish this, we have the R layer is still here, so we'll just do the R prime like normal. And now to get the U layer to the R layer, we again do this rotation. Now the U layer is here, so we can finish by doing the U prime and then go back. And as you can see, we have done a sexy move on just the inside cell here. So that is the basis of RKT here. We're using RO turns to do an R move to this side, but we can rotate to any side. So if we wanted to do an F, we would do the F move there. If we wanted to do a D move, we would rotate the D layer to R like that. Side note here, you can do RKT on any cell. So for example, you can do UF moves as your RO and then do any F cell rotation. So that totally works. It's just most visible and obvious on R and I. If you want to get used to this, a fun thing to do is to try to do 3x3x3, but just with rotations and R moves. So doing a soon sort of looks like this, and it looks similar to that when you're doing it with RKT on the 4D puzzle. So let's say that we wanted to do a JPerm algorithm here to swap these sort of blocks. So let's try that here. So the JPerm algorithm, I'll put it here. So we'll start with the R and then rotate the U layer to do the U, then go back, then R prime, and then the next move is F. So we rotate the F layer to R and go like that, then go back. And now it's a sexy move in the algorithm. So we'll do that. And then from here, it's an R prime like normal, but then we need to do another F. So that's like this and then R2 and then to do the U, we rotate the U layer to R and then it's a U prime and then like this. When you're doing RKT, in order to get your layers to line up again, they need to sort of cancel out. So if you have eight clockwise turns during your algorithm, you need to have eight counterclockwise turns during your algorithm to cancel out. Otherwise, you might be left with a move where your outer layers don't line up again. So say that you just inserted this F12 pair, but then your layers are off by one. Well, we don't really care about this U move right here, so we can just pretend to do that to sort of fix our outer layers if you like to do that. Before going on to the next video, I highly recommend that you play around with RKT and try and do some of your favorite algorithms using RKT. Your homework for this video is to do this HOLC case with RKT.